If you've been watching the channel for a while, you've heard of the name Yoda Master. I've covered many of their portable enclosures before, mainly for NVMe drives, and I use many of them on a regular basis. Now the company is looking to get into the actual drive space and they sent over their Y7000 4 terabyte NVMe drive. We're gonna go ahead and check this thing out. We're going to see how well it performs. We're gonna compare it against a few others and we'll ultimately decide if the value of this drive is worth considering. So first, let's quickly dive into some of the specs. Do bear in mind, this is their very first drive and the components are subject to change. As with almost all NVMe drives, sometimes the controller will change, sometimes the cache will change, specific models and stuff like that. I will try to communicate any of those if they are communicated to me and I will put any updates to the actual components in the pinned comment on this video if they are communicated to me. So do keep that in mind, but this is a PCIe 4.0 drive. It has SLC DRAM cache, which is pretty great. It's pretty typical. It comes in four sizes right now, 512 gigabyte, one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte. And they have told me that the specs on all of those will be the same. It's very common for a lot of manufacturers to change the specs between the lower and the higher capacity drives, but it's great that they're keeping all of these consistent. Now this is a QLC drive itself. So the actual storage chips are QLC, not TLC, which is what is typically desired in an NVMe drive. Um, but QLC isn't bad by any means. It just means that it is going to lack a little bit in terms of performance versus a TLC drive. The controller is the MAP1602, which is considered to be about, you know, middle, Middle of the road, it's not a bad controller, it's not an incredible controller, but when it's paired with pretty decent chips, it does a pretty decent job. So we'll keep that in mind. It has an endurance rating of 2,400 terabytes written on the four terabyte model. So that's pretty decent as well. Again, we will look at these as a comparison. Once we get to the end of the video, I'll compare it against a bunch of the other NVMe drives that I have. The advertised speed is 7,000 megabits per second sequential read and then 4K for random read and random writes. The warranty is five years. And again, some of these components may change, but I will communicate those to you in the pinned comment on this video. So now let's go ahead and get this thing open. This is the packaging. It was, it had the typical like sheet of plastic over top of that I took off. Um, we got the four terabyte model as mentioned. We got PCIe 4.0. A lot of the information on the back is Chinese first, English second, which no problems there. Um, they have a decent amount of information. Um, a lot of it is marketing terms. You know, this is quiet because it's an SSD and there's no moving parts, stuff like that. Um, but overall, pretty decent packaging. We'll get this thing open. All very standard in terms of SSDs. And so we have the drive and they also give you a heat sink if you are gonna be using this exposed, which is actually pretty nice. That is not very typical. Usually drives will either come with the heat sink already installed on it. And if you need to take it off, you have to end up using a heat gun and risk ruining your warranty, or they come with no heat sink and then you have to buy one your own. So it is nice that they are including one. Um, this is, very similar to one of the ones that they used on some of their portable SSDs. So they're probably using those same components. Nothing special or spectacular here, but it's pretty decent. And um, they give you the pads uh, for either side. So that's pretty cool. It's nice that this is included though. Again, this isn't something that's very typical. And then we have the drive here and the drive itself looks pretty nice. Um, I'm gonna peel back a little bit of the sticker to double check the controller model and the cache, but we have, all, everything is on the front side. So this back side is just the, um, just the substrate. There's no actual chips on the back. Everything's on the front. So fitment wise, that makes it a lot easier. Some laptops and even some NVMe slots on motherboards do have a harder time when there's chips also on the rear. And the fact this is a four terabyte and everything's on the front is pretty great actually. So getting that peeled off, the controller is the MAP1602 controller. It's the MAP1602A that I'm getting on there. We do have the chip models on here, which is great as well. 
Um, I will take a look at these and figure out what the manufacturer is and I'll put that on the screen when I'm doing the edit. Um, but the overall layout of the, of the drive is pretty good. So I'm pretty impressed with that. We'll put that back on. Now, what we'll end up doing is I will go ahead and get this thing installed in my computer and we will start looking at the performance. All right, so our drive is installed, but if I go ahead and go to my Windows Explorer, it's not here, so that means we have to initiate the drive. So we're just gonna go ahead and do that. So if you just open up your Create and Format Hard Disk Partitions, wait for that to load. It should automatically recognize that a drive is not initialized and it will walk you through the steps. So let's see. There we go. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to use the GPT disk one. Let that go ahead, there's the four terabytes. It should also, there we go. Now we're gonna go ahead and create a partition. So we're just gonna do new simple volume. We're gonna do it for the whole drive. We're gonna assign letter E, sure. We're going to call this one Yoda Master. Just to make it easy to identify and we'll go ahead and finish that. Now that that's done, we have the drive here. It now also appears in our disk management and I can go ahead and do our testing. All right, so now that it's initialized, we're gonna go ahead and do a quick little copy test. So I'm just gonna copy from my OS SSD onto the Yoda Master 4 terabyte. So let's do this. This file is 2.56 gigs. That's pretty quick, pretty good. We'll take that one off. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and run Crystal Mark. We're gonna first run Crystal Mark entirely empty, and then I will go ahead and run it with some data on the drive so that we can compare when it's empty, when it has data on it, because QLC does perform a little bit differently when there is data on the drive, and most drives do anyways. And then we'll go ahead and we'll compare that to some of my other results with my other SSDs that have data on them as well. So we're gonna go ahead and run this. I'll put a timestamp to when all the tests are done, this will be time-lapsed. So if you don't wanna watch these, you can just skip ahead to the timestamp. And these are results, so the Y7000 empty performs very, very well. And this performance basically blows all my other drives out the water. To keep in mind though, all of most of my other drives are all PCIe Gen 3. And the only PCIe Gen 4 drive I have is my main OS drive in my main computer. And so what I ended up doing was I filled the Yoda Master up to an approximately same percentage of capacity. So my OS drive is at 63%, so I filled up the Yoda Master to 62%, and then I tested both of them as well. The Y7000 did a fantastic job still. Um, its performance didn't really fall behind its empty performance, which was really, really nice to see. This isn't really to a capacity where there's gonna be a lot of issues. Usually that's gonna be above, I think, the 80% mark or so, but it is still great to see that the performance is still holding up really, really well once the drive is over half full. Um, so that's great. And then as I mentioned, my OS drive is the SN770, which is a DRAMless TLC NAND flash one terabyte drive. I do not have anything larger and the SN770 does not have a four terabyte version anyways. But 
the Y7000 outperformed that one as well. You got to keep in mind, however, the SN770 being my OS drive is constantly being used while the test is also happening. But the Y7000 is just being used for the test. So it's not really an apples to apples comparison in this situation. The SN770 is going to have a little bit of a disadvantage. But nonetheless, the Y7000 is still performing really, really well. And at its price point, I think it's doing a fantastic job. If we go ahead and take a step back and we just look at the price per gigabyte, the Odomaster is still doing a very good job. Yes, it has the lower end NAND flash on it, but it does have the DRAM cache, which really helps its performance in quite a few areas. And its price per gigabyte is still lower than the SN770. The only issue is the SN770 does not have a four terabyte model, so I can't directly compare their pricing. But regular price, the SN770 per gigabyte is more expensive than the Yodamaster four terabyte. But a lot of NVMe drives are currently going on sale as we speak. So it's a little bit harder to compare because the Yodamaster is now up to the price of a lot of other drives as they're currently on sale. These drives at their regular price are much more expensive than the Yoda Master, but currently on their sale price, they're dropping quite a bit. For example, Samsung's 990 Pro is currently $300. So it's the same price as the Yoda Master. It is PCIe 4. It has DRAM. It's TLC instead of the QLC. And you get a lot more performance out of that drive. But that is, again, its sale price versus Yoda Master's standard price. Right, its regular price is $465, right? So it's an extra $65 overhead. If you wanna pay that extra $65, that's up to you. Um, but again, the Yoda Master for its price point is doing good. And I think once it starts having its own sales, Yoda Master often does some really great sales both through the website and through Amazon. Um, it can be pretty competitive. It's just really difficult at this exact moment because prime sales are starting to start up with the prime sale being next week. And it's a little bit harder to do that price comparison. And then to close things off, what are the best use cases for this drive? I would avoid using it as an OS drive. It being QLC, I wouldn't wanna use a QLC as an OS drive with all those reads and writes constantly happening. It can lead to a failure a lot sooner. And the QLC drives are cheaper because they're using QLC, but they're also a lot less durable. So. I would avoid using it as an OS drive, but using it as a game drive, as just an additional storage drive in your system, using it in an enclosure, and using that as a portable SSD is a great idea. I'm probably gonna be using it as a game drive in my iTex computer here that I use downstairs on my TV and stuff. I think it's a perfect use case. Um, it won't overwork the drive too much where I would consider durability to be a problem. And then if I do have a durability issue, the data that I'm gonna be losing isn't important, it's just games, I can just reinstall those whenever I want. Remember, these are brand new drives. They We don't have a lot of information as to how long they're gonna be lasting, um, what happens when they start failing, anything like that. So it's gonna be a whole learning process. And whenever you're doing that with a brand new drive that does not have a lot of information about it, I highly suggest using it with data that you either have backups of all the time or data that you don't mind losing like games where you can just reinstall them. With all that said though, I am very much impressed with the drive so far. I am very much looking forward to getting a lot more use out of it, seeing how well it performs. And if I do have any significant updates, be subscribed to the channel and I will be sure to be making a video on that. Yoda Master has been really great and open with me in terms of information. So I'm sure if they have any important information, they will include it in the comment section down below. And I will also have my pinned comment that I will put any major updates in terms of component changes or anything like that in the pinned comment in the comment section below as well. I am very curious what you guys think about this NVMe drive. What do you think about the pricing? What do you think about the specs? Is this something you'd be interested in picking up? Um, what kind of use cases would you be using it for? Leave all that information down in the comment section below. I read them all and I would be really happy to see what you guys think. There will be links in the description as to where you can pick this up. The drive is supposed to release on July 18th, and I currently have the Amazon link, and I should have the Yoda Master official link in the description, hopefully by that date as well. Um, if I am missing anything, feel free to leave a comment, let me know, and I will try to get whatever you need. 
Um, again, Yoda Master has been super open with everything. So whenever I do have a question, feedback or comments for them, they take it all in stride and they do make changes based on that feedback as well. So do keep all that in mind. And since at this point, I think I've been talking too long, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those down in the comment section below and I'll try to get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors and thank you for watching to the end of this video. If you want to see any of my other product reviews as well as some other SSDs that I've covered and the Yoda Master enclosures as well, you can check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.